At the time, 68-year-old Thomas lived in a small mountain village deep in the mountains. The village was not big, and most of the people lived a simple farming life, and Thomas was no exception. He lived a regular, simple and quiet life every day. However, what he did not expect was that his life changed dramatically after he met an injured boar a few years ago. At that time, Thomas went to work before dawn. He didn't like to talk, so the villagers thought he had a very good personality. His only hobby was smoking, and wherever he went, he always took his smoking bag with him. One summer, Thomas got up early as usual. After a casual breakfast, he picked up the hatchet and went to the mountains to chop wood while it was cool. While passing through a dense jungle, he suddenly heard the roar of animals coming from the trees. At that time, he was startled and quickly stepped back several steps, and his cigarette bag was accidentally thrown a few meters away. Although his ancestors lived in the deep mountains and saw many wild animals, but then they just looked at it from a distance and left. They had never been so close to a beast before, and it was terrifying to hear their roar. At that time, he didn't know what to do, so he didn't dare to move or even breathe, for fear that a ferocious beast sprang from the bushes would hurt him. He stared at the growling bushes for a long time, but no animals came out. Driven by curiosity, he dared to walk slowly towards the roaring bushes to see what it was. But because the trees and vines were too thick, he couldn't see anything clearly, so he had to cut a wooden stick with a hatchet to pick out the bushes to see clearly. Just after he put the stick into the bushes, he suddenly heard another roar. Thomas was so frightened that he quickly retracted his hands and stumbled to the ground. He quickly got up and ran to a big tree. When he recovered, he didn't want to stay there. He wanted to hurry up and chop wood. But he didn't take a few steps, and there was another roar from the trees, which made him feel very scared. If he didn't figure it out then, he wouldn't be in the mood to chop down trees. He tried the stick just now, but nothing happened except the roar, so he boldly went to the bushes and used the stick to pick it up to see clearly. Even if there were a few roars during the period, he didn't care. He desperately wanted to see what animal it was, so he pulled the thick bush away. Then he finally saw it clearly. At that time, a boar was lying motionless on the ground, and it seemed that the roar was made by this boar. The boar was bloodstained and appeared to be badly injured. Thomas was close to it at the time, but it didn't respond. Thomas was nervous, for fear the boar would get up and attack him. He didn't know what to do then. For safety, he sat directly on the side and started smoking, wanting to observe the condition of the boar first. After smoking a cigarette, he became a lot more energetic. Then he found that the boat was huge, weighing more than 400 pounds. It suffered injuries to its legs and back, possibly from a predator. Its wounds were deep and bleeding a lot, the most serious of which was on the legs, where several pieces of skin were torn off. The ball was lying still then, just staring at Thomas the whole time, as if ignited with hope of surviving. Immediately Thomas also felt pity, but it was impossible to bring an animal that size home for treatment. He thought about it, usually after he was injured, he would pick some herbs in the mountains and treat the wound. He thought that if the boar was treated with herbs, it might work, so he acted immediately. He got up and picked up a lot of herbs for healing wounds and smashed them with stones to treat the boar. But he didn't dare to get too close to the boar. If he angered it, he would be in trouble. In desperation, he chopped down some vines and slowly bound all the limbs of the boar, and finally he sealed the mouth of the boar. Strangely enough, the boar didn't move at all while being bound by him, as if it knew that Thomas was doing it to save it. 
After everything was done, he applied the herbs he had picked to the wound to stop bleeding and reduce inflammation. After applying the herbs, he was afraid that other beasts would attack the boar again, so he loosened the vines that bound it. He took off his coat to cover the boar, he thought that maybe other beasts would avoid far away after smelling the human scent, so this boar would be much safer. Thomas couldn't guarantee that the boar would survive, but he felt that he had done his best, so he was in a good mood. After that, he picked up the hatchet and continued to go into the mountains to chop wood. Time passed quickly, and when he finished chopping wood, he remembered the boar on the way home, so he decided to go over and have a look. At that time, the spirit of the boar was much better. After seeing him, it was not disgusted, but called at him. Thomas thought maybe the boar was hungry, but didn't have the strength to stand up to find something to eat, so he turned around and cut some grass on the hillside, and put it next to the boar's mouth. The boar took a big bite and then left with confidence. When he went through the jungle the next day to see the boar again, he was disappointed. The boar disappeared, and all that was left on the ground was the clothes he had covered, and the weeds he had eaten. After seeing this, Thomas was a little disappointed. He didn't know if the boar left on its own accord, or if something went wrong. He had to leave to work. Over time, that event was quickly forgotten by Thomas. However, one day, three months later, a dramatic scene appeared. At that time, autumn came and the weather turned cold. Industrious and down-to-earth Thomas worked all day, and went to bed after dinner. In his deep sleep, he was woken up by his wife, who said she heard noises outside the door, and the dogs in the village barking loudly, so she wanted him to go outside the door to see what was going on. Thomas rubbed his eyes, held his breath and listened for a while. He did hear walking outside the door, so he got up and put on some clothes and crept to the door, and saw a boar walking through the crack of the door with the help of moonlight. At that time it sometimes lowered its head to sniff on the ground, and sometimes looked up and looked around. He was taken aback at first, but after a closer look, he felt that the boar was familiar. It seemed that the boar had also spotted Thomas hiding behind the door, took a few steps towards the door and looked up at him. When he saw the look of the boar looking at him, he finally remembered the boar he rescued in the jungle three months ago. He slowly opened the door and walked out. When the boar saw Thomas, it made a low noise and walked towards Thomas. Thomas was nervous at the time and didn't know what the boar was going to do so he could only stand stiffly at the door. However, the boar did not show any intention to attack him, so he was no longer afraid. Just as the boar was about to approach Thomas, his wife came to the door. After seeing such a scene, she thought that the boar was going to attack Thomas. His whiff screams rang out suddenly, making Thomas, who was standing in the doorway, jump to his feet, when he recovered, the boat was gone. When he told his wife about it, she didn't know what happened. After that, the boar often came to Thomas' door in the middle of the night, and Thomas was used to it and became familiar with this boar, even stroking its head. The boar would sometimes cuddle his trousers with its mouth when it was with Thomas, as docile and well behaved as a domestic pig. Thomas didn't know why the boar came to him late at night. He thought it was hungry, so he often fed it generously with the concentrate that the sows ate. A few months later, a happy thing happened to Thomas and his wife. At that time, after the cold winter, it was snowing heavily. Thomas so's belly grew like it was about to give birth to piglets. Thomas and his wife were nervous and stayed by the sow the whole time for fear that it would freeze when the piglets were born late at night. Late the next night, the so gave birth to 12 piglets in total. It was strange that the little piglets didn't look like pigs, but like boars, which left the couple confused and didn't know what was going on. 
But the little piglets were so adorable with their cute looks, and they hurriedly lit firewood to keep them warm. They worked for a long time, and went to bed when it was almost dawn. Before long, they got up to take care of the little piglets, for fear that they would starve or freeze. They were busy until the evening. When the boar came to Thomas' house again, he realized that the boar was actually a wild boar, so their sows could give birth to young boar cubs. After careful feeding by Thomas and his wife, all the twelve piglets grew healthy and grew much faster than domestic pigs. Neighbors had heard about the strange event and came to see what happened. The story spread quickly. Some out-of-town businessmen ordered these boar cubs in advance. They were charging far more than domestic pigs, much to the delight of Thomas and his wife. Everyone said that the boar was saved because Thomas was kind and the boar who often came to Thomas' house after its injury was here to repay his kindness. When Thomas heard this, he didn't say anything, just sat quietly smoking a cigarette. This is today's story. Click to subscribe for more interesting stories.